the $100 MBA Show, your go-to podcast for daily business goodness with our daily 10-minute business lessons for the real world. I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of the $100 MBA, a complete business training and community online. Check out our free course on idea validation over at 100mba.net. And in today's lesson, you will learn how to deal with disagreements in your business. If you have a business partner, if you have business partners, if you're working in a team, you're not always going to agree. But how do you deal with these disagreements? How do you make sure the best thing for the business happens and you salvage the relationship that you have with your teammates? This is really important because if you want to have a sustainable business, you got to really focus on the relationship you have with the people that you're building this business with. And in today, I'm going to share with you how you deal with disagreements. You know, Nicole and I don't always agree on everything. I'm going to share with you what we do so you can do the same in your business, regardless of who you're working with. All right, guys, let's get down to business. Today's episode of the $100 MBA show is sponsored by Constant Contact. Constant Contact is an easy-to-use, effective email marketing service. They have beautifully designed templates that you can easily customize to match your brand and look professional when marketing to your email subscribers. Make sure you look pro when you're communicating with your audience. And Constant Contact has been a market leader for 19 plus years and have over 650,000 customers. Become an email marketing rock star today and you can start for free with their free trial at ConstantContact.com. That's ConstantContact.com. I have six steps for you today when it comes to dealing with disagreement in your business, whether that's your business partner or people on your team that you make decisions with. So I'm going to jump right in and give you the first step. Step one is know that disagreements are inevitable. You have to come to terms with this. You have to understand that you are going to disagree at some point. So just know that right now. Understand that that's normal, that's natural. We are all human beings. We all have our own opinions. We have our own backgrounds. So we all have the potential to disagree with people. And that's okay. That's healthy. Some of the best ideas come out of disagreements. So when you know that disagreements are inevitable and they're natural and it's normal, don't get disappointed when it happens. Don't feel like there's something wrong with you or wrong with your business or with your partnership. It's completely okay. So step one, acknowledge the fact that this is normal. Disagreements will happen. A quick reminder, if there's other people on your team, like a business partner or other people on your team that you make decisions with, share this episode with them. It's good to be on the same page with these six steps. All right, guys, step two. When a disagreement happens, you need to step away from the situation and do two things. The first thing is you need to ask yourself one question. Each of you, whoever is on your team when you're having this disagreement, each of you have to ask one question. Ask yourself one question. That question is, what's the purpose of your business? You need to go big picture for a moment when you're dealing with disagreements because often we disagree on very small things that don't affect the purpose of the business. It may affect it in the long run or in a little way, but it's good to remind yourselves What's the purpose of your business? What are you trying to do with this business? What are you trying to accomplish? Why are you here? Why are you doing this? Step back a second and think big picture. It's good to do this because one, it gives you perspective. Does this really matter, the thing that you're bickering about? Or is it just ego? Maybe you're just feeling like you want to be heard. This is very important, so keep this in mind. I said there was two things you need to do, and the first thing is ask that question, what's the purpose of the business? The second thing is you need to remind each other everybody on the team, the people that you're having a disagreement with, that your relationship as a team is more important than a single decision. Working together, being cohesive, being harmonious, this is so much more important than just any single decision. Even if that single decision is about launching the next product you're doing, you can have more products, you can have different products, you can have different services, but it's really hard to change up your team every so often. So recognize the fact that Having a good relationship is important. This is very, very valuable to you, and you want to put that in the forefront. What's the purpose of the business? I value this relationship. Everybody agrees on that. Yes, we do. All right, let's move on to step three. In step three, we get into the actual disagreement. We got to allow people to voice their opinion. So you need to allow each person in this disagreement 
Let's say, for example, it's you and your business partner. Allow each person to voice their opinion for two minutes without interruption. So allow your partner to say, hey, what's your take on this? Here's two minutes. I'm not going to interrupt you. Say what you need to say. I'm going to be listening. And then when that's over with, it's your turn to do the same. The point here is, is that sometimes we just need to vocalize what we're thinking. And sometimes we're on the same page, but we think we have different opinions. We're just not communicating properly. So sometimes just by voicing your opinion on that decision, you realize you're closer to a agreement than you thought. Also, to be quite honest, sometimes when you actually vocalize and say what you think you should do in a certain situation, you realize, hmm, maybe that's not the smartest thing to do. So step three, allow each other to say what they need to say. Two minutes, no interruptions. All right, step four, now that you've both voiced your opinion, no interruptions, everybody's kind of just said what they think about the situation, it's time for you to be constructive. Now each of you has to propose a way forward. How do you move on from this point? Let me give you an example to illustrate what I mean by each of you should propose a way forward. Let's say, for example, your business partner writes a blog post. And it's a good post, but you think the post is damaging to the image of the business. So you ask your business partner not to publish it. You have a disagreement. Your partner thinks it's a great post and they worked hard on it and they think it's a really, really effective post while you think maybe it's effective, but it could be abrasive and can alienate some of your audience. So now you have to propose a way forward. You can either say, hey, I like the topic, but let's rewrite it so it's presented this way. That's a solution. That's a way forward. Point here is that in this stage, you're talking about solution. What are we going to do so our business keeps moving forward? Guys, I got more on today's topic. I got two more steps in. What are you going to do if you still disagree? If you still haven't had a resolution? We're going to talk about it right after I give some love to today's sponsor, FreshBooks. Guys, time is one of the most valuable commodities when running your own business. I know this firsthand. It's the reason why each episode of The $100 MBA Show is so short. We want to make sure that you have time to get your work done. Entrepreneurs always have a ton of stuff on their plate, and they're always on the go, and we get that. And FreshBooks, our friends and sponsor of today's show, couldn't agree more. In fact, saving time is one of the main reasons small business owners love them so much. If the thought of finding time for formatting and sending invoices, tracking your tasks, and managing expenses makes you cringe, then you need some FreshBooks in your life, guys. With FreshBooks, small business owners spend way less time on paperwork and end up getting paid an average of five days faster. Did you guys hear that? Five days faster. Plus, it's super intuitive and easy to use. You'll be creating and sending invoices in minutes, watching your expenses practically organize themselves, and probably wondering why you didn't start sooner. Try FreshBooks for free for 30 days, and you'll find out why 97% of customers highly recommend FreshBooks. Just go to freshbooks.com slash MBA and enter the $100 MBA show in the how did you hear about us section when signing up. Again, start for free with FreshBooks at freshbooks.com slash MBA and enter the $100 MBA show in the how did you hear about us section. So what do you do if you still can't agree? You can't come to a resolution. Step five, get a mutual respected opinion. Find somebody that you can ask and get their opinion that you both respect. This may not be always easy, but it's always helpful to just hear from somebody. And remember, when you're talking to this third party, just say it like it is. It's not time for you to be in the courtroom and arguing your case. Let them just give their unbiased opinion. Often that third party can shed some light on a way forward. But what if you still can't agree after that? And this happens. And that's why I have step six. Put it on the back burner. Don't rush it. There's no reason for you to rush this decision, whatever it is. If you can't come to a resolution, if you can't agree on a way forward, don't make a decision. Let some time pass. Sometimes it only takes a day or two for you to think more clearly. Sometimes a week later, you realize, huh, this is not even that important. Let's not do it at all. The point here is that you don't have to make a decision right then and there. If it's about something you're publishing, just publish something else instead. Write a whole different new blog post. It's okay. Just hit the pause button on that decision for a little bit and revisit it. Put it in the calendar. Say, revisit this decision in the calendar and say how you feel then. The point here is, is that this is your business and it's your relationship with those who you're building the business with. It's important. Don't get heated and don't let your ego take over. Listen, guys, I'm speaking out of experience here. I'm not perfect. I have very strong opinions and I'm very passionate about what I do. I care a lot about my business. So when, when Nicole and I disagree sometimes, I have to remind myself of these steps. And of course, I got to remind myself that at the end of the day, I know I can't do this alone. I got to do it with Nicole 
and we got to come to a resolution together. All right, guys, that wraps up today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it beneficial. If you did, we would love to hear from you in an iTunes rating and review. If you're on your iPhone, just click on the cover art and click the link that says give us a rating and review. If you're on a browser or any other phone, just go to 100mba.net slash show and there's all the instructions there. And remember, everybody who leaves us an iTunes rating and review enters our weekly random draw where we give away a free ride to the $100 MBA training and community every single Friday. We call it Free Ride Fridays. It's our way to say thank you for your support. All right, guys, we got a whole bunch of great lessons lined up this week. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about do squeeze pages work? And on Friday, we're going to be talking about should you go to business school? A big, big question a lot of people have been thinking about and asking us. We're going to be addressing it on Free Ride Friday. But before then, I got to leave you with this. No one likes confrontation. Some people are more comfortable with it than others, but no one looks forward to confrontation. If they do, they have some social issues. But the point here is, is that sometimes when we're in an uncomfortable situation, we get very primal, we get very defensive. I know this firsthand. And it's good to remind yourself that this is going to happen. I need to prepare myself so the best of me comes out and not the worst of me. Guys, when I come up with these lessons with The $100 MBA Show, I try to give you really practical lessons things that I've learned in my experience, things I know that you're going to need to know, if not now, then in the future. So I hope this lesson today was helpful, and I hope to see you in tomorrow's episode. I'll see you then, guys. Take care. 